Okay, this experiment we're looking at preservatives that we tend to add to food and how it inhibits most bacterial growth. It won't necessarily inhibit all, but it will inhibit most. And so we're going to look at the effects of two different things here. I have tubes with nutrient broth in it, but I also have added uh, various concentrations of salt, a 1%, 5%, and 10% salt. Salt acts as a very good preservative in most organisms cannot grow in high salt concentration, so that's why it does act as a preservative. And then garlic also has been um, often touted as having uh, inhibitory effects on bacteria. So we're also going to add some garlic to a nutrient broth as well. And then we're going to have our control, which is just regular nutrient broth, no salt, no garlic added. We're going to use two different organisms today. One we will use as an enterobacter, um, it's commonly found in the intestines, it's gram-negative. And then the other organism we're going to use is a Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus epidermidis. Staphylococcus is known to be able to grow in higher salt concentrations than most organisms. So we're going to see the different concentrations of salt and what effect that's going to be. So we're simply going to inoculate. Uh, we have stock cultures growing in a nutrient broth. And we're just going to use that to inoculate the various tubes. So as I said, we will have our control, which is the nutrient broth with no salt added to it whatsoever. And that's what I'm going to inoculate first here. The salt concentrations, they've already been... Um, add it to the media when we were making it. So all we have to do is just inoculate the tube just like we would any other tube. So as I inoculate, I am moving the tubes over to the other rack so that I am able to keep track of which ones I have inoculated. Now, theoretically speaking, if I were using a pipette, um, if I start at the lowest concentration of salt, then I could use the same pipette to move up to increasing salt concentrations. But you can't go from high to low because that would mess up the, the concentration factor. We will incubate these at 37 degrees uh, for 24 hours. So this is the final salt concentration. I want to make sure that my needle or my loop is nice and sterile all the time, but certainly I don't want to be transferring any of the salt into the tube with the garlic from a research standpoint, then that would be a problem is that the salt or is it the garlic that is inhibiting the growth. Now, this is sterile uh, nutrient broth. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this for some garlic. Add some in. It is definitely strong. And now I need to inoculate that too. So let me flame my loop. Let it cool for a bit. I'm done with the garlic. So we are going to close that up. Thank you, 
it. This medium that has the garlic now added to it. And as I said, we will incubate for 24 hours at 37 degrees C. If uh, the bacteria is inhibited, it should remain clear. If the bacteria grows in the broth, remember, it will turn cloudy. The first thing we're going to look at is garlic. It has often been uh, claimed to have inhibitory effects. And so first we look at the enterobacter in a regular nutrient broth. It's cloudy. That indicates we had lots of good growth in there. Compared that to a tube that uh, had garlic placed in it, new tube broth with garlic. There is some cloudiness in there, so apparently the enterobacter likes garlic. It did not inhibit the growth of it. Now, the Staphylococcus, Mimus epidermidis, if we swirl this bit, this is the nutrient broth. Once again, we had growth in there. Now, the garlic with the enterobacter there is see how clear the liquid is there is no growth in there at all so garlic did have an inhibitory effect on the staphylococcus not on the enterobacter so it depends on which species you are talking about now the other type of preservative that we looked at was the various salt concentrations the Staphylococcus at a 1%, we have nice growth in there. Staphylococcus is known to be able to have a high tolerance for salt. So there is salt at the 1%, a growth at the 1% salt. And the Enterobacter, we also at 1% did have some growth in there. The next concentration we looked at was at 5%. The Enterobacter, here you can once again see how clear that liquid portion is, there's no growth. So at 5% uh, concentration, the salt we use with sodium chloride, it is inhibitory. For the Staphylococcus, there is a little bit of cloudiness, not very much. It's just starting to grow a little bit. So it did a slightly better than the Enterobacter. And then the next concentration that we used was 10%. This is with the enterobacter. It is completely clear, no growth. And with the staphylococcus, it is clear and no growth. 10% is really high for salt concentration. So that's not really that surprising that at that high of a concentration salt, it is inhibitory to the bacteria. So it just depends on which species you're looking at and how effective for these two agents that we looked at, how effective they are as a preservative.